Right. So I've just gone out and got myself an Ambiano mini deep fat fryer from Aldi. Um, I've always liked the idea of these kind of things because um, obviously I've got a big one as well. But that would probably take about 20 quid just to fill it up with three litres of good quality oil. And this one looks like it should just about be able to do one medium sized adult portion of chips. Or if I want to do chips for my two children, I could probably get away with uh, just doing one fry up in one of these and split it between the two of them. I have actually owned a very similar one in the past. It might even have been the same make. It was definitely from Aldi or Lidl. Um, it was similar to this, but it was more of a cube shape than this sil cylinder shape this one looks like. Um, the problem I had with that one was that it claimed to get up to, I think it was the same maximum temperature as this one, 190. It might have been 170. But even 170 should be okay for doing the final fry of chips. But it never seemed to reach that temperature. Um, it only really seemed to reach about 170 Fahrenheit. So I'm kind of wondering if they'd messed up the scale. And it, it only actually went up to 170 Fahrenheit. So that's the thing I'm most interested in when I'm testing this one out later. And I'm going to be testing it with a um, deep fat fryer temperature gauge. So we'll see how that gets on. So let's have a look at this. which we won't need. This is the basket, obviously. So that's the size of the basket in comparison to my girly little hands. And, um, yeah, that's probably all right for a kind of medium adult portion obviously I could probably eat four times that but if I'm being sensible that's probably enough for me that goes on just like that I think or into this little just clips in there like that okay so on the front we've just got a temperature dial and a light and some instructions it's suggesting chips 180 at 190 you can cook three stars I don't know what that means right I'm just going to give this a rinse out and then I'll be back in a second okay I'm back uh, one thing that I would say is that the build quality is pretty poor. The outside is looks like really cheap, shiny plastic. It did only cost seventeen ninety nine though. The last one I had, I, I think it probably only cost about twenty five, but that was all stainless steel, so that was a lot better. But like I said, unfortunately, it didn't work properly, so that just ended up in the bin. If this one doesn't work, 
I'm just going to take it back. Okay, so the other thing I've noticed is the power lead is very, very short. I can't even get it into a socket that's about three feet away. So that's not ideal, especially for a deep fat fryer. You don't want people to be putting it in places where it's less than ideal because the power lead is too short. So I've just got an extension lab, uh, cable here. And inside, if you see, it's got a min and max marker for the oil level. I want to try and fill it up to near the max, I think. I'm not sure if I've got enough oil. I'm going to use lard, actually. I don't think you can really beat lard for the price to performance ratio. So I've got some lard, but I think I might have to nip out to the supermarket because I don't think I've got enough. Polish lard. Well, it might be okay. I've got some other that's used in a pan, so I can add that in. I've only used it once. Um, so there's no on-off switch, it just has a dial, and the bottom of the dial is off. So I just put it on to about 80, that should be able to melt it. Let's see what level we get to. Actually, let's put it up a bit more, I can always turn it down. Yeah, that's melting already. Oh, quite fast. That click then probably means it's reached temperature. Quite impressed with how fast it's melting this. We've just, meet, we've just reached the min line, minimum fill line. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near the max though, so I think I might be nipping out to the supermarket. Yeah, I'm not going to get anywhere near it. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to nip to the shop. Hopefully it won't have all solidified by the time I get back. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, back again. Um, I've just been out and I've bought three more blocks of lard. I think it's going to take three, but I'm just going to add two. It actually seems to have melted the rest of them, even though it was turned off. So they must have melted with the residual heat. So these blocks of lard cost about, well they cost 60 pence each, these are from Sainsbury's so they're probably not the cheaper. But if it takes five blocks then that is going to be three pounds just to fill up this little mini deep fat fryer. So people might be a little bit surprised about the cost. You'd obviously want to cook a fair few portions of chips for three pounds um, because chips, a portion of chips from a fish and chip shop costs two pounds on average around here and it's probably going to be a lot bigger portion than you'd get out of this. The potatoes obviously cost practically nothing. So we'll put this back onto heat. Um, while I'm doing this I'm just going to chop some potatoes into chips. These are a bit small really for making chips with but it's just what I've got left over. I think they're King Edwards. I don't know if that's a good chipping potato. I know they're good for roasting but I'm not sure about chips but roast potatoes are a similar concept aren't they? Make a nice scallop with that one. So I've decided not to blanch these because um, I made roast potatoes with these earlier in the week and pretty much as soon as they touched hot water they just disintegrated. So I'm just going to double fry them I think. I'm going to fry them first for a few minutes at about 135 centigrade, assuming it gets up to that. And then I'm going to 
let them rest, take them out, let them rest for a little while, and then do the final fry at either 170 or 180. Um, so I might as well get them ready in the basket. I'm not sure what the best way to arrange them is. Maybe upright, do you think? That's going to be a pain. I think I'll just put them in higgledy piggledy. Even though you need a bit of space between them anyway, don't you? Okay, so I think I'll go with that, and let's see how this oil is getting on. Oops, we're above the max. Right, okay. I've gone above the max line, so it's actually, it's only going to have used... I better get that big lump out. Take this out. And that is exactly on the max line now. So it's used um, four and a bit, four and a bit um, blocks of lard. Right, so this is set to 110 degrees centigrade right now. So let's see what the deep fat fryer gauge says. Okay, that seems reasonable. It seems to have stabilized around maybe a little bit more than 110 probably closer to 120 actually even though it's only set to 110 I would say just looking at that right so I'm going to put it up to put it up to 130 I'm just going to check on my mobile phone what the recommended temperatures are for frying chips because I think I've forgotten I think it's 135 and then 170 so I'm just going to check that Okay, most places seem to say do them for 160 for the first fry and then 190 for the second fry. So I'll go with that. I've not done this for quite a while. Uh, I'm just going to do a couple more steps with the chips to get them ready first. I'm just going to rinse them in a colander. So I'm going to put these into a colander and rinse them under the water to get rid of excess starch and then I'm going to pat them dry uh, with a towel. Okay, this is a clean cloth that I've not used for anything. So I'm just going to dry them off with this. If they're too wet when you put them in the deep fat fryer it can spit a lot. So it's best to do this. They look pretty dry. Okay. So make sure I've got the right ones. And we'll put these back into the frying tray. Bring the fryer out again. Right, I'm going to set it up to 160, wait for it to click. That's probably about 160 now, so let's go for it. I'm going to put these in. Set a timer for four minutes.
So one of the other main problems that I've had with deep frying chips in the past is even if you get the pan up to temperature or the deep fat fryer up to temperature, as soon as you put the chips in, the temperature dips down quite a way, which is expected. But I've struggled to get the temperature back up to um, the normal cooking temperature. So unfortunately, because I've had to close the lid, I can't check how fast it's got back up to 160. I mean, it might never get back up to 160 in the four minutes, but um, I think we'll just have to judge by the final result. Okay, that's been about four minutes now, so I'm going to take them out. They look pretty good actually, probably a bit more browned. I think, I'm sure I used to do the first fry at about 135 or 140. But anyway. I'll take those out, just drain them off on some kitchen paper. I'll turn this off. What, I'm sure what I used to do in the past was I used to put the chips into the fridge for about an hour after I'd done the first fry. But the recipe I've just been looking at on the internet just says drain on kitchen paper. And then heat to 190. And then do the second fry straight away. So I'm just going to try that. Okay, while we're waiting for that, I'll just put the chips back into the basket. I mean, if you don't have to put them in the fridge in between, you may as well just leave them in the fryer and ramp up the temperature to 190, surely. I don't really understand that. I think these are going to be all right though. One seven five, one eighty, one ninety. So it has reached one ninety. In fact, it looks like a bit more than one ninety. Edging two hundred, according to this. In fact, actually reaching two hundred. Right. Let's get these in. Hope we don't have an explosion. That is. That max fill line it's recommended is way too high because that is bubbling over. I'm a little bit concerned about this actually. I'm going to put the temperature down a bit. They look pretty brown already. And we did say that these King Edwards cooked very, very quickly, so they've probably cooked through already from the first fry. 
and I don't think this second fry is going to last four minutes. I'm going to take them out way before that. Well that last one I bought would never brown chips like that in a couple of minutes. You could leave it on for 20-30 minutes and it would never brown the chips. It just didn't get to the temperature. This one actually seems to exceed the temperatures, temperatures it says it can get up to. So, you know, I'd be a bit careful with it. And also, don't fill it up to that max level. That's just too high because I haven't I haven't overfilled the um, the basket but when it was at the max level the oil and I put the basket in the bubbles were coming over the top let's just test what the temperature is right now out of interest So it's soared right past 150 even with the lid off. Up to 175. And I've got the dial set to just below 190 now. So obviously the lid's off which makes a difference. Right, I think these chips are just about done actually. So I'm just going to turn the phone off and then I'm going to get them out. Actually, I'm going to get them out. I'm just going to turn this off. Look at that. I am impressed. Compared to that last one I had, that is awesome. Okay, so here we go. Uh, those look, those look flipping brilliant. I can just feel how crispy they are. Get some salt on there. Malt vinegar, of course. Right, let's get this nice scallop that I identified earlier. I'm going to put some sheep salt on because I don't think that I don't think that pink salt, Himalayan salt, was fine enough. It's, the granules are a bit too big. Let's try another bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, they're better than chip shop chips. They're not the best chips I've ever had, but there again, you know, I'm not even sure if King Edwards are particularly good for chips. I've never heard of them being used for chips, but these, these are damn good. Mm. Crispy on the outside. fluffy in the middle. So going off what I've seen so far, would I recommend this? Yep, definitely. It only costs £17.95. It's very plasticky, but the outside 
didn't get very hot when I was cooking so you're not going to burn yourself on the outside um, very impressed with the performance it gets up to temperature very fast and I was very impressed by the time it took to melt the uh, the lard initially it did that very quickly it seems to maintain a decent temperature after you've added the food um, it was getting up to a decent decent temperature even with the lid open while I was testing it and um, I'd just be cautious with that fill level um, I didn't have the basket over full but when I put the basket of chips in it was bubbling over the side a little bit so I'd be conservative on the heat setting because I think it actually gets higher than it says and I would not definitely not try and overfill that basket okay everyone it's been a blast see you next time